The snow has gone, and with that also the really short days. And with that, welcome back to the Norwegian forest and to an episode where we basically go out and enjoy the nice weather. I have a lot of stuff on my back that I have to carry up that hill and I would just like you to enjoy this. I'm not sure if you're gonna see animals, but we're definitely gonna test out our gear for spring. Because it seems like spring is there, we suddenly have plus degrees, some days even 10 degrees plus, and there's just a bit ice left of that super thick snow layer. I have to say though that this early spring weather can be a bit treacherous and maybe a sign of climate change as well, these extreme changes. But in one case, it's just, it happens in Norway quite a few times that in March suddenly it gets warm, but then the temperatures drop again. And for the weekend, I've seen that it's gonna be quite negative again. And overnight it will be definitely minus degrees. So it will be a cold night, but winter could be coming back. I still have some hopes, but I don't expect it because expectations often cannot be met. So let's just start right into the forest and see what we can find. If we find a nice place to camp, set up a fire or something and just enjoy ourselves. Only a few hundred meters up from when I recorded the last time, I found Cape Kelly droppings. So for anyone that has seen my Cape Kelly video from last year, you know how they look like, kind of like geese droppings. And this is a really good indicator. I nearly thought that this is something else, like I just saw leaves or something on the floor, but this is definitely Cape Kelly droppings. So happy this is really important for me. <sighs> cool, just cool. Just look exactly here, there, a bit all over the place, but that's definitely it. I reached the top, kind of the top that I wanted to reach. And from here it's kind of, it's flat, some swamps around, forest down below, where I kind of saw the Kepa Kelly signs now, where I saw the Kepa Kelly earlier, like two, three weeks ago. Nice. Overview of the area around, water not too far away, and good place to make fire as well. I just set the camp up at first, then I have everything done. The light is too harsh anyway to anything, but I thought about it while going over there. If that's kind of the place where I maybe want to see animals, then I shouldn't be camping there. So I should stay a bit away. And then this location is just just perfect. So I stay here, build up my tent, get maybe some firewood together. That's the most important thing right now. take too much time until the sun sets and until then I want to have water and I want to have enough firewood to have a good meal eventually and to have warmth in any case. Yes! Oy.
<sighs> Just had a quick walk down there and there's an icy waterfall which has really fresh water which is good. I thought I had to maybe stick to some dirtier water but I filter everything anyway but there it's just coming out from the swamp area and then it's really filtered so I should be fine drinking this like like it is but I need to boil it anyhow for cooking and I have a bottle that filters so that's that's what I'm gonna drink but you should be pretty safe drinking this anyhow but never a guarantee now I just have to go and gather some firewood and then we're set for the night and that's just so beautiful <laughs> I'm, I'm happy it was not like it was not the perfect day today for me to go out it came a bit spontaneously that i decided to go out i plan to go out on the weekend but now i just got something free and then i'm like okay just do it now before it gets colder before you lose the mood to go out i just do it and get your first night out for this year because my New Year's resolution, I'm not sure, do you call it like that, was to at least go camping more. Because last year was actually not a much and I'm a bit disappointed my, with myself. So I thought like, try to go out at least twice a month. And that didn't work out for January and February because I don't have the gear yet. We wanted to have another tent uh, where I also could fit the dog in and <laughs> Annalene in. And we still didn't get that yet and I was waiting for that and waiting for the new tent now I was just like go out do it and just enjoy yourself and I think that's really important to just do things not wait too long for stuff that's like if you're waiting for a new camera to take photos right that's uh, just you will never take the photos with a camera you don't have kind of and uh, you will never go out without and t camp without a tent that you don't have so just take my old tent, just go out and do it and have a beautiful evening. Sunset is close at hand. You can see that the sun is coming a bit through the trees. I'm feeling warm enough. Might soon go into my wool clothing. I don't know yet. Might feel like I'm uh, gonna make dinner soon. I'm not totally decisive if I had a good lunch. I'm not sure if I need it. I started up the fire. It's beautiful, I guess at some point I will hear some owls or something in the forest. And can't wait to wake outside. Yeah, wake up outside. <laughs> wake outside. <laughs> I just enjoy the morning and hopefully we see something, but there's no guarantee. But I want to show you something tomorrow, which is a really big aspect of, for me at least, of finding animals to photograph. And I will show you that tomorrow morning after we're done with the night here and we will go down to a place we have installed something and most of you will already know what I'm talking about but talk about that tomorrow morning. It's an indescribable thing to listen to the forest can hear the moose scream in the far, hear the crackling of the fire. You know that the cold and the night is coming in soon. I can't wait for a long and cozy night in my tent. Just some things you can't really pay for.
yeah, I admit that I have quite some problem with going up right now because I slept not that much. I wasn't cold. But somehow I still have this. When it's cold, I have this sleeping by claustrophobia that keeps me awake. And I have to, I guess, train living with that. Oh god, I must be looking so tired. But okay, I should get out of bed and see if we can find something. Gladly there's not sunlight coming in here yet. <laughs> Even though it's kind of already has been sunrise. This here is kind of my original plan to sit at this big swamp area and look out if maybe something comes across because I mean moose are made to go through swamps with their long legs so far it doesn't look like I will get anything oh god I'm still so tired but you can hear that they're like the first birds are reading the morning. That's kind of beautiful. As you might can think yourself, I wasn't too successful until this point. The sun is as high up as that I really would have to put nearly the variable ND filter on this lens now to film. At least an open aperture. I went back to the camp because I got hungry. And it's not fun being out if it's cold and you're hungry. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I didn't feel like cold. You have all these clothing on in your walk. But these swamps can be quite tricky to get through and then you get warm quite fast. Gladly, most of them are frozen still. But it will be way harder to cross them when spring really is here and the summer comes. Maybe on my way back and down I have another chance, but still I wanted to show you something which I think is the best tool that you should use right now to find wildlife, to photograph it. And we will still do that. Ah, these mornings are like, they're really beautiful, start off, but you have to learn to live with like seeing nothing. These forests are big, and these animals, especially moose, are like ghosts. But one day it will just work. That's just one insight into how it actually is. I just saw with a quick look that my 
I have exactly enough water to make my dried food. And since this morning has not been too... And this night has not been too nice to me, I will give myself the dinner that I didn't want yesterday. And I just wanted to show you some really handy stuff. Because I got a and sister and her husband, they gave me really, gave, gave us, <laughs> gave us really nice presents. For example, I didn't own a cooker, like for a gas stove, since I've been in New Zealand. And they, they are also really outdoorsy people, so they thought like, why not give them something? And this one, I don't even know what the brand is. You can look like you can extend the legs like this. It's like, it gets super small when it's packed. Isn't that unbelievable? I'm just so amazed by how nicely designed this is. So you can simply, and there you go. And I also like the ones that are standing on its own because then they're not so dependent on uh, the ground where your gas casket is standing. So I will just start having a really big breakfast. I think my food is ready. It's nice and warm for the hands. Normally <laughs> I quite often show you when I'm eating, but not today, I don't feel like it. Not the perfect morning, but maybe this food will make my morning better. I should just be happy that I woke up in the forest. But I just can't get over that sleeping bag fact that I just, I don't know what goes on in my mind that I get so stressed out about being in so many layers and that's what it's bothering me so bad <laughs> that I just can't calm my mind down to sleep <sighs> as you might see I've I've been done with packing and it's quite a lot of stuff that I dragged up with me here. I wanted to maybe just have a few words about what kind of kept me warm today uh, over the night. And it's always good to have an insulation mat, uh, then your normal mattress to have it comfortable. I'm not sure if that maybe is a mistake, but yes, that's what I had and I felt warm. Then I have two, three season sleeping bags. One winter sleeping bag or all season sleeping bag would do the job, I think. And then it's just having all the ventilation in your tent open so that not the moisture from you sweating or from your breath gets trapped in the tent because that will make you feel cold. And it's also, you should be careful so that you that warm, that you warm enough but that you don't sweat because also that sweat, that moisture uh, will make you feel cold. But you all know that if you hike and you're sweaty and then you stop and then you feel cold. So it's like you come into town, you maybe build up your camp, but then latest you should change your clothing to stay warm. I'm glad that we have this beautiful weather. Still minus degrees overnight. And now I will move down into the forest there to see if I can still find something. I don't want to always show you how I'm packing or I, I just don't like myself repeating stuff because you see me building up the tent, for example, for quite two times. But you can tell me if you think it's more immersive for you if I show you the whole process. But I think I can cut it down a bit to come to the essence of the videos. And now let's go down. I have to get a bit warmer in these clothing because I don't have wool on anymore. I'm 
just sitting here and enjoying a bit this morning still. I didn't want to rush off too fast. Because I'm so grateful for it last evening and waking up here. But I'm sitting here and I'm getting a message from Anneline's sister who owns the forest with her husband, right? And on her trip yesterday she saw a female cat for Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so hilarious. I'm gonna stay here and enjoy a bit more. So now that we're down from the mountain, or the hill, out of the forest, I want to talk a bit about why even this trip is kind of the right thing to do in wildlife photography. Because if you want to see and photograph more animals, which maybe didn't happen today, you have to be out more. You have to be consistently out and look after animals. That's one thing that makes you get better at wildlife photography, makes you get more photos. But my most used tool, and now it becomes really important because spring is at the door, is wildlife cameras. Now is the time to get them out. I'll show you some clips now, what I've already done so far, and what I've already seen. Because animals get really active as soon as the sun is a bit stronger. And let's look at this. I'm here at my badger spot, I would call it. I observed badgers here last year. A bit later, towards fall, I got them on camera. I know that they're here. I also know that there is a number group of roadie in the area around. And now that I've seen that some people already start looking after their badgers, I thought it's time to set up a wildlife camera here. This one. What you just saw here right now is that the beaver is insanely active and it's just the first week in which the snow is melting and we're a bit further inland but that's so much activity insane I have to come back I have to set out a camera in any case So right now I'm at the beaver place again and I want to gather in my camera and see what is on there. And whatever is on my cameras will now be the outro for this video. I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cozy video being out trying wildlife photography. Because we all know it doesn't always happen. And if you like the video consider giving the video a like because it helps the algorithm write a comment for the algorithm follow around if you're new here i'm glad about every new subscriber that finds his way to my channel 
we've been doing a lot of this 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 uh, spring and figuring out at what times the animals are there what places are the best to get good photos with better light than last year I also will try to keep up with being outside camping outside because if you're not there you're not gonna get it that's just how it is so get out it's spring enjoy wildlife photography enjoy nature in itself don't get too disappointed <laughs> and yeah just have fun with your photography we see each other soon in another video bye